and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity launched in January 25. Awesome games always keep coming out, even in January. There's some great multiplayer games, some single player crafting, factory games, clickers, horror games and a bunch more. Then in February we're also going to have the Steam Next Fest, so there will be even more awesome games announced this month. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything the engine can do, the only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the game shown here really puts that to the test. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so the list is in no particular order, except for the number one game that is my personal pick of the month. Do you need some awesome low poly visuals? If so, then check out the sale on the Synthi store. They've got tons of really cool packs for pretty much every theme imaginable. Using these packs you can make any kind of really awesome games. They've also got some flash deals at 70% off. Today the sale is on this super cool mech pack. Really perfect for making your own Titanfall game. Then tomorrow you've got sci-fi space, then shops, casino, and a bunch more awesome stuff. So you have to check out everything on sale with the link in the description. Alright, so starting off with one that was in early access for 9 years, it's called My Summer Car. I've heard great things about this one. It's all about owning, driving, tuning, and fixing your car. You do all that while also driving around in a very unforgiving world full of dangers. You start off with just a simple chassis and a ton of rusted parts, then you put them all together and build a nice working car. The whole thing has a very janky 90s PS1 game look. You can do all sorts of things. You can run from the cops, you can watch some rally, cook some meat, go dancing and do lots of random tasks. You can even play Frogger on your computer. Then just join some races, upgrade your car and just try to survive. So all in all, very strange, very neat game. Like I said, this one was in early access for over 9 years and has finally been fully released. In all that time, it got almost 80,000 very positive views. So this one is already a massive hit. Next, here's an interesting game titled Butcher's Creek. This one is a first person melee horror game. So definitely a very interesting concept. Usually horror games are all about running away, but this one is all about taking out the monsters, so it's horror with a little bit of action. Although it is still a horror game, so it's very creepy, very freaky. You've got dark corridors with lots of bloods and very strange things. You've got various melee weapons like an axe or a shovel to defend yourself, as well as simply your trusty leg to kick some opponents down some hole or into some traps. The game looks extremely varied, it's got lots of very interesting environments, and apparently also has an interesting health mechanic. You gain health by taking pictures of very gruesome scenes, that's what it says in the description, very odd, very unique. This also supposedly shares the same world from the developers other games which have also been quite successful, so I wonder if this is something kind of like Five Nights at Freddy's which has quite a lot of lore behind it. Whatever the reason, it seems people really enjoy it. It's got 500 reviews at 92% positive so that's a great score. Then for something quite a bit more jolly, here is Mika the Witch's Mountain. You play as a witch with a flying broom, then your job is to deliver packages to the townspeople of this small island. The game looks very relaxing to play, some perfect chill vibes. You can also explore this island to do some fun challenges, kind of like a speed time trial, or go fishing while also flying on your magic room. Usually adventure games like this one are all about platforming, so having one that is about flying is definitely a very unique approach. Your goal is to reach the top of the mountain, so for that you need to work hard, complete some quests to get a better and better broom, make sure you protect the packages, don't let them get damaged by the elements, change into different outfits and just enjoy this nice relaxing experience. It is out now with 300 very positive views. Then here's one that I'm surprised it's actually not finding much success, even though it's perfect, at least for me. It's called Status 1. Personally, I'm a sucker for anything with top-down with line of sight mechanics, especially if it has a SWAT theme. If you're familiar with my game dev journey, then you know that's actually what I want my first game to be like. At some point in the future, I definitely would love to do another Survivor Squad game. So anyways, this game, this is top-down with harsh line of sight. You can recruit and train your team of highly specialized units. You can give them orders, make them breach some doors, throw flashbangs and a bunch more. But then you also take direct control of your leader unit. So you yourself can kick down a door and take down all the bad guys. It's up to you to decide how to play the game. So will you lead from the front or let your teammates in go first? That's really up to you to decide. Choose what missions you engage in, pick the right equipment and complete the mission. This one seems very well made, so I'm very surprised as to why it's doing so badly. So far it only has 11 reviews, all of them positive. Maybe it's because it only launched with 2000 wishlists, which is a relatively low amount, but it does look great and reviews are positive, so hopefully over time it will find an audience. Next, if you want some silly fun with friends, here you have The Last Train out of Wormtown. It's a fun multiplayer asymmetric game. One player plays as a giant underground worm, while the others are normal humans on the surface. The worm is mostly blind. It can only detect players when they're walking on the sand. If they're on top of rocks or buildings and the worm player cannot see them, as the players, you need to work together to complete the objectives, and as the worm, your goal is to simply eat all your friends. So it's just some wacky good fun with friends. This one also has an interesting thing, it has a free friend pass. I'm not sure how exactly they implement this. I guess they use the Steam API to check the friends list to see if a friend owns a game, and if so, maybe that person can play the game for free. Either way, definitely a very interesting idea. 
Indie multiplayer games usually suffer from what is called the cold start problem, where if the game doesn't get enough players then nobody buys it because the game is technically already done, so making it free for friends is a great idea. This one is finding a ton of success, perhaps because of that. It's already got over a thousand reviews at 96% overwhelmingly positive, so this one is definitely already a huge hit, I'm guessing it's already very popular with streamers. Then if you want a gorgeous survivor like, here is Jotun Slayer Hordes of Hell. You've got lots of enemies, lots of spells and abilities. Pick your character from multiple unique classes. You can go melee heavy with Berserker, fire some arrows with the Revenant, or burn your enemies with the Flame Scissor. Explore the skill tree to unlock godlike powers to demolish all your foes. Defeat hordes and hordes of enemies, but also complete various objectives and defeat the final boss. Explore these gorgeous worlds based on Norse mythology. The whole thing really looks really great. And the game also has meta progression, so every run gets you just a little bit stronger. If you're a fan of this genre, then this looks like a great new entry. It is out now in early access and already has 1700 very positive views. Next, if you want some fast-paced air combat action, here is Top Dog. This one is all about super intense dogfights. You take control of a sci-fi futuristic plane, use your guns to take out flying enemies, or use some missiles and bombs to take out some ground enemies. The whole thing is super fast-paced. Your plane is extremely maneuverable. You can actually upgrade to make it VTOL, so you can strafe around in mid-air, strafe to dodge some enemy fire, and then hit them hard. It features roguelike elements with randomized runs, so go ahead and try to get to the top of the leaderboards, which reset every 36 hours. It's one of those easy to pick up but hard to master, so if you want some fast-paced satisfying arcade action then this one is for you. Right now it's got almost 200 very positive views, which is actually quite a lot for what is usually a niche genre on Steam. Then if you like cats and factories, here is the perfect game for you. It's called Learning Factory. Start with a simple machine and some simple conveyor belts, then gather some basic resources like wool, and then process them into more advanced items like yarn. Do that and then sell those balls of yarn to some cats. Keep gathering more and more materials, making more and more complex supply chains until you build the ultimate Catopia. One thing that I love is how on the store page they have a mini chart showing the game features for both beginners to factory games and veterans, so the game has something for everyone. For beginners, just enjoy a relaxing atmosphere, make the cats happy and build some production lines, but for veterans, explore the underground layer, use some actual machine learning to control your outputs, monitor dozens of metrics and terraform the entire world. So it literally has educational videos to learn about machine learning, so this one is fun and educational. It really looks like a great experience for either people new to the genre or people who have already played Factorio for thousands of hours. This one was in early access since 2021, it is fully out now with 300 very positive reviews. Then here's a sequel to a very successful indie game, it's Tales of Iron 2 Whiskers of Winter. This one is a side-scrolling action RPG. The first game is set in the south of this world, and now in the sequel you go north into the cold to defeat a new unspeakable evil. Explore this cold wintry kingdom, gather your troops and hunt down some giant beasts. The goal is to defeat some very intimidating bosses, fight some giant toads, some creepy birds and some weird bats. The combat is all very deliberate, very brutal. You need to pay attention to your surroundings, dodge, jump and strike at just the right moment. You can craft your own arsenal of upgradable weaponry, you can use a spear to strike from afar, or get up and close with a sword and shield. Alternatively, use some traps to gain an advantage. Visually, the game is really gorgeous, it has a really interesting dark moody style. Reviews also compare it to Dark Souls, Elden Ring and The Witcher. Those are definitely some excellent games to be compared to. People are really enjoying this nice indie sequel, it is out right now and has 300 very positive views. And then at number 1, for my personal pick of the month, here's a really cool one called Click Mage. This one is all about resources. Start with just a simple tree trunk, hit it to get some wood, then use that wood to construct some buildings. You can process some iron ore into iron ingots, keep going down the crafting tree bit by bit making more and more complex items, upgrade your clicking power so you can gather more and more, so the game is really all about constant iterative progression, constantly getting better and faster. Keep improving until you can build a portal and escape this island. It's been quite a while since I played an incremental game, so I'd love to try out this one. It looks very simplistic and very appealing. People do seem to agree, it's currently got over a thousand reviews at very positive, so that's a great result. Alright, so that's 10 awesome new games made with Unity launched in January 25. I hope this list helps you see how the Unity engine is capable of building anything. The limits are really just your own skills and imagination. Check out my own game, Dinky Guardians, and I hope you enjoy playing it.